this is the chance for uh, the city finance team to present the audited financial statements for the work that was done in the fiscal year ending uh, September 30th, 2016. Uh, we're honored again to have personnel gauge Nick Nicholson, uh, an auditor from their firm, is here to give his annual presentation. Uh, happy to report that as he will report to you, uh, we've been uh, the recipient of a, used to call it unqualified, now it's n unmodified uh, <laughs> audit reports. So that's, again, good news as uh, we will be submitting the uh, this current audit and uh, CAFR to uh, the GFOA as well to see if we can continue that string of awards. So with that, I will uh, ask Nick to come give this presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Welcome, Nick. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Go ahead and just uh, dive right in. Uh, like Gary said, my name is Nick Nicholson. Um, I've been with Presno Gage Accounting for uh, going on 12 years now almost. Um, so, uh, and, and have been a part of this audit for, I believe, 10. So, um, so very, very familiar with it, and it, it's good to see all, some new faces this year, actually. So I think the last two or three, I, I have not had any new faces. So. Um, with that being said, what we're going to kind of go through this is um, just some financial highlights. We'll do some comparative analysis um, as part of this, but also primarily just to give you the results of the audit and really um, the idea behind what an audit is. So um, as Gary was talking about, the CAFR, basically the Published Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, um, that, that part is the CAFR itself is governed by the um, GFOA, the Government Finance um, Office of Accountability, and, and, and basically they, they require a certain amount of, of detail in a regular financial statement that is submitted to them that is above and beyond what your normal financial statements have. Um, that includes I items like statistics uh, of the area and, and like 10-year comparisons and those type of things in addition to just the basic financial statements that are submitted to them. And so that's, when you hear the term CAFR, that's really the difference between the CAFR and just your regular governmental financial statement. Um, basically, the layout and, and the information that's within a, um, the CAFR and just a regular financial statement is, um, is governed by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, GASB. Um, and basically it's governmental, govern, or generally accepted accounting principles govern how we do our work and what we report. So, um, as far as uh, what is in a financial statement and, and who is responsible for what, I like to tell everybody the information, the numbers, and, and the notes, and all of those items that are within the financial statements have nothing to do with me. They're the same things that you guys see from meeting to meeting. The information is not different. Um, it, it is put into a presentation um, uh, forum that, that is uh, subject to those standards that, that I mentioned before. Um, but the actual numbers are, are, are exactly what you see from a meeting to meeting basis. So the next question is, is then what is, what is my purpose as an auditor? And our responsibility is basically to perform tests of those numbers and the information and the procedures that you're following and give an opinion on it. Um, we have multiple opinions with, within the financial statements, one being the, the presentation of the financial information as a whole, and then the other is on your internal controls um, over your financial reporting and compliance. Um, and actually this year there is one more additional item in that um, in a year where you expend more than $500,000 of federal financial assistance and actually going forward that is 750, um, when you expend that within a year of a federal grant or anything like that, we have to do an additional um, set of testing which is called a single audit, which basically we're testing and providing an opinion on your federal grant programs um, individually. In all of those cases, we have given what's called an unmodified opinion, which is our highest opinion. Basically, it means the presentation or the, the financial statements and the internal controls as presented are uh, materially correct as far as we can tell from our testing. We, we did not find anything that would make us believe that the financial statements are misstated or that there is any procedures that are going on that we considered relevant enough and important enough to disclose to you um, that, that something is out of the ordinary. So, so that is our opinion is, is that um, this is as clean as audit as we could 
we could possibly um, give. So, so kudos to the finance department on that. And, and with that being said, I think we'll move um, directly on into kind of the layout and, and some of the information within the financial statement. So here is some, uh, if you've got the financial report uh, in front of you, here, here's basically kind of the table of contents and, mm -hmm. and how it's broken out. Um, I won't go into too much on that. Um, within the audited financial uh, statements, basically it's broken out and, and, and the idea behind the GFOA and GASB, they want to highlight your major funds. Um, so you'll see when it comes to your financial statements, um, that there's two sets of financial statements. One that is um, a government-wide, basically it summarizes all your governmental activities and your enterprise activities, which enterprise, water, sewer, garbage, um, and, and basically everything else falls under your governmental. Um, then a second set of financial statements actually is um, on your governmental activities and breaks it out by what is major and what is non-major. Your major funds, um, and basically most of it is a calculation and its size of how much money is in these different funds um, and, and does it rise to the level of just being big enough. So your major funds, general fund, street fund, parks and rec fund, capital projects fund, and the Hamilton funds um, have risen to the level where they basically get to stand alone in their own column and reported separately. Everything else, the non-major is summarized kind of within the, with the statements and those are your other uh, non-major funds um, listed there. And then your enterprise funds are generally separated as well. The general fund, um, basically what, what goes into the general fund is you look at your governmental funds and everything that is not required to be accounted for in another fund falls to the general fund. It's the catch-all um, of, of everything that is um, not special revenue um, and not specifically earmarked for, from another revenue source. And it's basically your chief operating fund. Um, special revenue funds, as I, I mentioned, basically they're to account for um, funds that come from a specific revenue source that actually restricts how you spend those revenues. Basically, it's money raised and must be spent for the purpose of what that money was raised for. Um, obviously, Parks and Rec is a, is a perfect example. Um, you have fees from the Parks and Rec um, facilities that go right back into spending money to upkeep those facilities. Here's kind of a statistical, um, as you look at your fund balance, that's the operating funds. That's, that's what you have left over. That's your assets minus what you owe. Um, and basically, this is what you have available at the end of each year to operate. Um, and it's broke out by your major, these three kind of major governmental funds, general funds, street fund, and parks and rec. You can see kind of a rise in the general fund, and then this year was actually the first drop in, in this time period. And the primary reason for that is just transfers out of the general fund for some special projects. You transferred some money into major projects, you transferred some money into the parks and rec for um, current projects that occurred and some future projects. So that's kind of the, the trend where that dropped back down. As, as you can see, it was building up, and then uh, for the first time, um, you kind of cut into that fund balance a little bit. Now, the other funds that I mentioned, enterprise funds, basically, um, and these, these uh, actually operate on a different form of accounting when, when, when you look at this financial statement than your governmental funds. Governmental funds, I like to say, it's basically a budgetary basis that they operate on. Governmental funds, you know, it you're really, it's more cash basis. You guys are more worried about do we have the funds available and, and are they within budget, and that's how you operate on. That's what you look at. An enterprise fund, when you're reporting that, it's required to be um, presented in more of a business-like fashion, um, which basically the reason behind that is GASB wants to look at these financial statements or have statements that they can compare to any business, to any area um, nationwide. They, they want to be able to look at this and say, does this make sense with everybody else? And so in this set of financial statements, when it comes to these enterprise funds, items like uh, capitalizing assets, your big projects, and depreciating them, the, that, is, that is not a governmental um, fund style of financing. Um, and the same with debt. Debt goes on the balance sheet. It's not an expense when you um, send it out. Only the interest would be an expense. So that's the primary difference. When you see governmental versus enterprise, that's the difference between the two. 